hey what's up guys just out here in the shop about to start an exciting day of work just putting on my work clothes here now before we get started we actually have a sponsor for this video and that's exciting for both of us as we both get something out of it now with the code noseworthy15 you can shop at exter i'll throw my affiliate link down in the description exter mainly sells wallets a very premium premium level wallet the whole they just they look and feel fantastic i've got a couple i'll show you here now but it's not necessarily the leather work or the wallets that i'm most excited about some really cool technology now here are a couple handsome wallets that i picked out from the extra site which are really nice real premium but what i like even more than the wallets is this technology here this is a very intelligent gps tracker that is credit card size that fits inside a card slot on your wallet. Now you can buy just this card for your wallet as well, although the extra wallets kind of have a, a have a slot that's a, just a little bit bigger for this to comfortably fit in. Imagine this credit card is in your wallet, you have the Chipolo app on your phone connected to your wallet via Bluetooth. Now you have an option to pull up a map here that shows you exactly where your wallet is. Now this is so accurate because it even shows the shape of the building you're in and whereabouts in that building this credit card tracker is. You would also know if it was skimping off down the street in someone else's pocket. So it's very nice. If you couldn't find your wallet, you have your phone, you can't find your wallet, you hit this little button right here, your wallet starts ringing until you stop it right here. Now suppose your wallet's sitting in your pocket, but you laid your phone down somewhere, you don't know where it is. There's a little button on the front of this tracker that if you double press, it will ring your phone. Even if your phone is on silent, it'll, it'll like override the system and cause your phone to ring. I just think this is the best technology. Funny story, the very day that I got this in and I, and I wanted to change out my cards, put into my new wallet I could not find my wallet pretty ironic I looked for an entire day for my wallet and uh, it was it was hid somewhere in the house somewhere out of sight I couldn't see it so it would have been real nice to have that technology then but like I said down in the description you have an affiliate link there they are giving me commission uh, if you guys buy something. So check out the extra site by clicking my affiliate link. If you want to buy something, if you want to use your own wallet and just buy the tracker card, which is a really good value, you'll see the price on there is awesome. But take advantage of my discount code, Noseworthy15. Now if you guys have been following my Facebook and Instagram pages, uh, my story is on both of those as well, you would have seen this thing fully set up. But if you're only following me on YouTube, you wouldn't have seen this monster up and running yet. This is my Origin Blade Maker, my OBM grinder, the 2x72 setup with a VFD, a beautiful motor, my custom table I built for it here. I'll try to put the card up here if you want to see that table built. But this thing is up and running and I've got a batch of knives going here with it right now. But this is getting closer to a commercial grade tool. I'm so proud to have been able to invest in this thing. It's just got a lot, a lot of stuff to offer. Now I have the Genesis VFD here that uh, has its basic features, it's a variable frequency drive which means I can adjust the speed, it has basic start and stop functions on it right now. No belt right there obviously right now, just a 4 inch drive wheel. But uh, I can also set this up to, to be uh, forward and reverse as well, so I can backtrack the belt. Maybe I would want that at some point, I haven't found a use for it right yet. But we'll see where time goes. But I cannot say enough good things about this grinder. Right now it's wearing the small wheel attachment here, which allows me, oh, so pretty fresh and crispy, but allows me to change out these front rollers so I can have different size, uh, different size contact wheels to grind on to get in small notches and choils. Just opens up a lot of features. So far I've been doing that work with an old uh, bench top drill press and some drum drum disc sanding wheels there which those drill presses have no real power like that so you really have to go light and it takes forever and the discs last no time the sanding drums so this is just a beautiful setup and a beautiful piece for me and a beautiful step forward the support for my crafts work in general has been phenomenal from you guys but uh, for my knife making in particular the support has been uh, just 
unbelievable to, that that I would have that kind of support. It's just been great. I have a big batch going here now, like I already said, but uh, I'm looking at stepping up my game in terms of tooling. Before this year is out, Lord willing, I will be in a new shop. So uh, that's some exciting news. We're going to be taking you along on that when the time comes. But that's that's going to be throughout this year. That's a big big step, big project, a lot of work there. I hope you guys let me know down in the comment section if you would like to see a shop build. I have a plan for a series like a building my dream shop type thing. So I think that'll be really exciting. But uh, I hope you guys will be along for that as well. So in case you're wondering, you know why I would invest the money in something like this because this is a US product uh, it's the one I selected OBM grinder modern VFD uh, the table I, I mean quite a quite a bit of money here this between the motor VFD setup and the grinder I mean between two and three grand which is quite a significant investment but it's a lifelong tool it's rebuildable now for less money I could have went uh, the route of like the tradesman channel uh, he's he just finished building a phenomenal 2x72 grinder but what I was afraid of is well for one the time investment of building something like that is a pretty significant time investment also you're still going to be in quite a bit of money just the motor and VFD alone which you would have to purchase you're going to be in probably 1500 bucks Canadian just for for the motor of an adequate size motor this can run on uh, this is three phase motor can be wired for 240 it's wired down to 110 right now can be wired for 240 and you've got a full two horsepower there and these VFDs are this is a this is a top grade one all dust and water and clothes and stuff so it's protected it's just phenomenal phenomenal setup but you're probably in 1500 bucks for that alone and then to build a chassis for it that I still might not be happy with even after spending say a couple hundred bucks in steel and getting the actuator and I'd still have to order in the drive or uh, all my wheels and everything which would cost a couple hundred bucks so, you, so you're in say two grand and maybe you still don't have something that's that's perfect and maybe you don't have something that's perfectly interchangeable with all the attachments and stuff OBM makes a whole series of different attachments from surface grinder attachments to small wheels different contact wheels so by buying from a reputable company like this I have access to all that stuff to build onto my grinder so this really is uh, a big term investment this this thing will last me a long time and it will grow with me so it's why I spent the extra money to get something professionally made like this there's something else I'm looking at setting my game up on this year and that's starting now is my dust collection and how particular I am with uh, with respirator protection knife making mainly dealing with handle materials the steel is also bad but you got to be careful with it but it's not as bad as some of those some of those handle materials especially the synthetics my Carta G10 is real bad as well you really got to protect yourself with something like that we just saw a Canadian knife maker close just recently, shut down shop after 15 years due to uh, some health issues which are largely respiratory, so you've really got to be careful I'm looking at stepping up my game. Now one thing I'm going to do when we got the new shop, again just a little teasers, but uh, I got the idea from Alex Seal, awesome YouTuber, awesome YouTuber, but um, to have a separate grinding room that's sealed off air control and all that I definitely want that and it's going to happen in my new shop that way you go inside you've got lots of air cleaners and lots of air catchers and stuff in there and hopefully you keep that room as clean as possible but hopefully when you come out your shop is not going to be filled with dust you're not going to have everything else in your shop buried in this uh, terrible dust as well so here's the stair I have a one horsepower So I have a one horsepower king here. This is not a real expensive or big like commercial grade outfit. It's a one horsepower dust collector from King Canada. This thing is actually a lot bigger than I was expecting, but it should pull uh, over 600 cubic feet of air per minute, which is a pretty highly rated, uh, a pretty highly rated rig. It's got an electric motor, of course, a big, a big fan here. It's going to suck in. 
So right here, it's going to blow out into a bag. Now I understand that these bags are not like very finely rated, so when it comes down to like micarta dust and wood dust from handle materials, I'm hoping it'll catch the bulk of it, but uh, of course it's not going to catch everything. In time, what I'm hoping to do is actually pipe this thing outside to maybe a bin. So it'll be inside my grinder room. It'll be running right off of my grinder so it collects all that dust blowing directly off the grinder. Hopefully as much as possible, we'll stage it and uh, we'll pipe it right to the wall outside into like a, a big bin or something that I can change it over time. So we'll see how that goes. Big hard plastic induction hood here, which is really nice. It's nice and wide. I believe 10 inches by 4 inches that came with it. So this is just pretty nice here. I'm gonna see if we can get this set up on our grinder to see uh, how to set it up. Let's just make sure it works. That was not intentional for this to fit in here, but I was hoping it would. And right there. And of course, with these uh, with these outfits, the less distance you have from your dust source, of course, to the induction of the engine or the motor there, the, the suction of the fan, the more power you have. So this being right here, and my grinder table being just right there, I'll have maybe two foot of hose so I'll have almost as good of a situation as you can have for dust collection there. My outlet's going to be here on this side. I'm not exactly sure yet uh, what I'm going to do for that. So this air intake right here, we've got this dust collector. I'm thinking just mount it right here up tight to it and that will cover, maybe we'll come out a little bit. We'll see. I'll do a couple configurations there to see. Uh, See what happens. Sheesh! Very small, uh, small length of hose needed to get right there. Maximum dust collection.
Got my trusty magnetic old light here again. Man, these magnets come in handy. So handy. I don't know why that hasn't always been used for for lights like this. Now with just a little bit of modification, you see I was able to make this work It's nice and sturdy and I made it work using mostly the original parts. It's not supposed to mount this way, it's supposed to mount this whole rod here is supposed to mount inverted down in top of the, uh, the, uh, the air, the dust collector, but I mounted it this way. And this way I do have, as you can see right here, a left to right adjustment and say if I needed it ever over here, uh, I still have an adjustment up here on the arm. Well, if you can see right here, you have two joints. This is like a friction and pressure joint with a pipe clamp on it. That's just the way it came. But that allows me freedom to move it, to pivot it. I can pivot it over here and level it. I can move it in and out as well. I'm able to move it on out here like this. Depending on different attachments, you know, different things make uh, change things. but. It's all adjustable. I can even loosen it up and turn it this way if I found that it was better to use it with ways. So this works really well. Just a dandy setup. I'm liking it. Sorry I don't have a wider angled lens for you guys, I, I just can't get everything in good context here in the frame. So first when we started, you see I, uh, I laid, if you remember, I laid the blower in here and I thought it was going to be a perfect fit and I was conjuring up how to mount it. And then I remembered that I didn't, I wanted this thing kept free at least for the next little while because there will come a point where I will be doing some inside construction work on a house. And I'm going to want a blower like this to feed, uh, to clean the air, to blow all the air outside for when I'm doing any drywall sanding or anything like that inside the house. So I didn't want to bolt this thing on. So I'm just going to leave it here on the floor like this for now. I almost bolted it on and then it would have been a pain. I would have had to take it out again, but thankfully I remembered. Also, um, the kit here comes with a 10 foot beautiful rubberized hose. Uh, which probably would be fine, but we're gonna get hot grinding sparks and dust and this tube So I use like a, a sheet metal duct hose Like a dryer like a dryer vent hose So it's gonna be all right and hopefully by the time the metal pieces get down to the to the motor here They'll be cooled down especially down to the bag which is fabric But uh, at least for now I'll be using the bag on there uh, This does run a full metal fin uh, metal fans all the fins are, are metal so we don't have to worry about the heat there and hopefully like I said everything will be cooled down by the time it gets out in the bag we'll see it's all easy to get at so if there were was an issue with something smoldering not a big deal I have sealed off with duct tape there nice short run running down all the way to the motor so we have gravity helping us out as well and uh, this seems like it's gonna be perfect 
it just uh, it's going to be perfect here right now. And then I'll have that hose, that nice clean hose for when I do some of that inside work later on. I can just run the hose outside the, uh, I'll run it with nothing on the intake. So it's just sucking in air from the room. And I'll put the, the 10 foot hose on the output and blow it out a window. So that should work great. Just lovely. Very, very happy. The switch opened up on that motor. That is just lovely. Love it. So much suction from that motor. But one thing I can see is that this is a bit low for this mount. Uh, when I have on the D platen here, which is what I use most of the time, it mounts on this side, but you can see how low it mounts. Okay, so, and, and dirt from this one gets thrown straight down because the belt wraps around this, this bottom contact wheel here. So that'll be really close, it'll be awesome for this setup, and that's why I mounted it that low. But really, when I'm running this small wheel attachment, it's too low. So I'm gonna, I see that I'm gonna have to put another one of those knobs up probably, probably six or eight inches taller. And that way when I switch to the small wheel attachment, I can just pull it out and slide it up there. And it'll be nice and close right up here for this one, just so I can maximize the amount of dust that gets collected. But uh, that's awesome. This is pretty quiet, might seem loud on the camera, but it's nice and quiet, it's just a steady low pitch sound, it's not high and windy like a shot back, it's really awesome. All steps along the road, <laughs> all steps to try to build a better craft, to try to build a better shop, to protect myself, just uh, strategic moves all along the way to try to, to try to do the best work I can. Thank you guys for watching, I hope you liked the video, I hope you learned something, but even if you didn't, I hope you were entertained. If you have a suggestion how I could rig this up even better, or maybe something that's even more mobile, I'm not opposed to grinding off the little outfit I put on today and having something that moves. I just can't think of something right now that uh, that would do that for me. So thanks for watching. Comment down below. Subscribe to my channel if it's your first time here. And again, that extra link down in the bottom if you want to check it out. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.